I lost $2,000 card counting in Vegas. And at the end, I learned one of the most important lessons for new or potential card counters. I boarded the plane and it was full of dudes ripping shots who couldn't wait to touch down in Sin City and forget they had a two-year-old at home. Then there was me, plotting to take down the casino industry armed with a couple of grand, a backpack, and whatever dignity I had left at this point. The reason I was going to Vegas was to meet with other counters and basically learn from them and gauge where my game was at this point. But of course, I was also there to play. We touched down and even though 80% of the flight was drunk, no one clapped. And for that, we thank you. You know you're in Vegas when the first thing you see off the plane is a slot machine and the first thing you smell is cigarettes. I go to get an Uber and it's 60, maybe $70 to the strip. Nah. So I took the bus. It was only $2. The bus driver was just talking the whole time about how she loved driving buses and all I could think about is how only 1% of you are subbed? Get dropped off near a medieval times, but that's actually Excalibur. It's a castle looking casino. It's really weird. And I already know my target. I'm headed straight for the booty at Treasure Island. Get your mind out of the gutter. I begin my two mile hike to the casino, awed by the strip. I'm bumping into everyone because I keep staring up at the lights, the buildings, the tall women, I could barely focus. I finally got there and this was my first time ever playing a double deck game, so I was pumped. Now this trip was before I kept good records, so unfortunately I don't know the exact spread I was playing at Treasure Island. What I do have written down is my EV was floating somewhere around $24 and began playing right away and before I knew it, I had already been playing for two hours and already up a couple hundred bucks. Around three hours in, I went to hunt for food and realized everything in Vegas is hella expensive. So I went next door to the CVS and bought some peanut butter pretzels and cheese at Grooves. I play three more hours, I'm up $500, so I bounce and go to meet the other counters. When I get to the place, I open the door and to my surprise, there's another black guy. He's like, yo, I'm like, yo, meet everybody. It was really cool. I was really gassed, so I went to sleep. The next day, we spent the whole morning, afternoon doing trainings having seminars, and I was basically learning a lot. Shout out to everybody who was there. If you, they might not know, they might know, I don't know. At the end of the day, we broke and hit the casino. I went back out to get the booty at Treasure Island. Just emphasizing that. This time I brought reinforcements. I was playing there for an hour, up and down, pretty much break even, very boring. I walk back inside after a snack break and three of the counters I was with earlier are sitting at the three other tables. I plop down and play for another hour, basically break even before we all slowly get the boot. The pit boss comes over to my table, looks at me with my do-rag hanging off my head and walks away. At the end of the shoe, he comes back, counts down the deck, which means he goes through the double deck and counts it the way that I count cards. The third time he comes back in the middle of the shoe and says, you're done. I said, what? He said, you can't play anymore. The drunk guy next to me is like, what'd he do? That's not fair, man. It's his right. Let him play. I'm so tired. I get up, cash out. Don't even say bye to the mom that had been hitting on me for an hour and a half. I walk three miles, realize you can't leave the strip without an Uber, eat the cost, go home, KO. Sunday, there's 14 hours until my flight. And there's only one thing on my mind. Crushing the casino industry. Hopped in an Uber to a casino, coined the sweaty Spaniard. Is that offensive? Eh, maybe. I sit down at my first ever single deck game and I didn't realize that the swings, how much you win or lose at a given time in a single deck game are way more than what I'm used to. First two hours, I'm invincible. I'm up 700 already. I get some coffee and just expect to do this for the next eight hours. Next shoe, I lose 401 shoe. But that's fine, I've been winning, so I'm not worried. Then I win $100 the next shoe. Next shoe, lose $400 again. Three hours later, I've lost $1,000. I'm freaking out at this point. I go and get some pizza and eat it on a curb. The next four hours are filled with constant losing, questioning of existence, and dirty looks from strangers and employees as I continue to pull more money out of my pocket. I had it in like a brown, like dirty envelope that had been crinkled on the plane. It was, it, I, look, I look crazy. Like that, I lost another grand and only had a couple hours to my flight. I grab some sushi, come back in the casino, lose the very first hand, and then I'm like, Fuck no, baby! <laughs> and walk out. As I waited for my Uber, I was convincing myself those books I read were lies, and I knew reading was for nerds, and I should have never tried it in the first place. I had a red-eye flight, I was sitting between two babies, I'm not even joking about this, there was two babies, I wanted to jump out of the plane. And in between those two babies, I realized how much I love playing blackjack. In all seriousness, after this trip, I realized that my game wasn't perfect, and this major L made me realize that this is not a joke. I upped my training to fix the flaws in my game, and that is my biggest advice to new counters. Your first big loss or your first big losing streak 
is only the beginning. All of the losses that come after that, they're going to be worse. They're going to be bigger. And it's going to keep happening. Even though I had this big loss, the next five sessions after that, I continued losing three to $500 per session, every session. And that sucked. <laughs> that was one of the worst feelings ever. I just thought I was stupid. I didn't know what I was doing. But it's all part of the process. You know, and if you're going to fall apart at the first roadblock, you might as well not get in the car. 